Right. Thank, thanks, Leo. And first of all, I want to say that we very much welcome in the Care Reform Group the dialogue that we've now got with the STUC and with others. We've, we've been working now doing really what the government should have done for the last two or three years, which is uh, talking to people, any, anybody who will listen in the professional organisations, uh, in organisations concerned with care, and I exclude from that Scottish care, I'll come back to them in a minute. Um, but people who are concerned about care and social work and social care. And uh, the, the caring for all, which you <laughs> referred to tonight, was the result of, of 18 months of work. Now, that, that work on your behalf as Commonwealth supporters was undertaken by a group of people who, like myself, have spent a lifetime working in social work and social care. Some of us have written about it. Some of us, like me, have a trade union background in social work. Uh, some of us um, are social work educators and social care educators. Um, and, and, and we all, I think, without exception, uh, are, are experiences of care in one form or another, whether that's for ourselves or, or relatives that we care for. So we brought all that experience to bear in the work that we've done. And we, we haven't just done caring for all. If you look on the Commonweal website, you'll see a whole number of other papers, because what we did is we set out to look, uh, and Linda talked about this, uh, it, just what care means. What do we mean by that? How, is it, how important is care in society? And we believe care is, is and the relationships around care are actually the glue that holds society together. So that 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 should be the starting point. And unfortunately, it hasn't been for government. Now, um, out of the, the, the mess in COVID that created all the care home deaths, the government was, were kind of shocked into um, doing something about it. They they. Uh, commissioned the Feely report, which we feel didn't go nearly far enough in looking at either the problems or ways of solving them. It, say, it, it recommended uh, compartmentalising adult care and care of the elderly into a new care service and leaving the rest of it. And, and in our view, that was the first mistake because um, to break up social care and social work would set the clock back years and years. We, we got past that bit and started talking about an all-embracing service that would promote social welfare back in 1968 when we passed the Social Work Scotland Act. And to take us back to, to take us back, but, but, but beyond that, to pre-1968 would, would not be a, a useful move. So we set about making all these arguments. We also um, were critical of Scottish government for basing much of what they did in, in both the, the lead up to the bill and in their response to the Feely report around, the, around what they call lived experience. Now, it sounds great. They've done the same thing with the promise that you talk to people who use services and then you build from that. Now, now that should only be part of the story. Um, we shouldn't base everything on lived experience. The lived experience of one carer is their experience unique to them. The experience of people that have worked with dozens and dozens of carers and people who use services probably should carry um, just as much weight. And unfortunately, the government didn't talk to uh, social work organisations, didn't talk to trade unions until this, this service was pretty well embedded. And unfortunately, they took from the lived experience group, and we still don't know who's in that group. It's been meeting since 2019. Um, we, the, the, they took the notion that local government had made a complete mess of things and things needed to be removed from local government and placed into a new centralised service. So that idea was popularised through the lived experience movement. And as Linda's uh, well explained, that is uh, an attack on local democracy. It goes completely against other government policies like the 2015 um, Community Empowerment uh, Bill Act. Uh, it, where, where, which was all about localizing services and introducing more local democracy. Instead, we look, we, it looks as if we're heading pell-mell towards uh, a centralized service through an enabling bill, um, which will require heaps of secondary legislation, which as Craig explained earlier, isn't subject to the same level of scrutiny 
um, by Parliament and, and uh, up for amendments and the way that a piece of primary legislation is. And quite honestly, uh, you know, I, I can't say very much about the bill because there really isn't very much in it. Uh, for instance, there's no mention of social work whatsoever. And for us, social work's pretty fundamental as a preventative service that, that uh, helps people resolve problems much, much earlier. Now, we lost a lot of that in social work many years ago. And those of you that are involved in the world of social work will know that it's currently crisis-led, crisis-driven, and as a result of that, suffering uh, very low morale. And we want to bring social work back to what it should be doing, which is a preventative relationship-based service. And all that, as far as the government's concerned, is subject to a co-design process in which they've been highly selective about who's, who that co-design actually involves. So I'm going to so I need to say something about our alternative that we've laid out and caring for all. And we continue to argue because it really it is the work that the government should have done for starters. Um, the, the, the bill doesn't set out what the premise of a national care service is. And it, and it provides little idea of what that might be. Um, it, it's, there's a vague phrase about improving the quality and consistently of social services in Scotland without in any way explaining what that actually means or how you, you might go about it. And we believe that's really pretty conservative and certainly doesn't meet the kind of root and branch change aspirations that came out of COVID and, and the, the deaths and the care homes and the mess that social work and social care had already got itself into before COVID. So we believe that the, the creation of a national care service should be based on three legal duties. The first one being to promote a caring society, taking us back to that welfare principle that we had in 1968 and were in danger of losing. That the second one should be to support all those who provide care informally through caring relationships. In other words, making those relationships, uh, giving them some primacy instead of it all being led by budgets uh, and, and how much we can squeeze out of people in as short a time as possible. It's no accident folks that uh, I'd, I'd stay down in Ayrshire, that two of the health and social care partnerships down here are led not by professionals from social care, but by accountants, because that's what we're being led by at the moment. And this, um, the bill doesn't take us off in the direction that we need to go. So um, we believe that um, a new care service should be founded on what we call the three R's. So rights is very, very important, but human rights on their own are absolutely mean, are meaningless unless there are, there's a guarantee about the resources to back them up and enforce them. So it's rights, it's responsibilities, it's the resources that are needed to make, make that uh, work, and it's about relationships. So those four R's, we called them, lead off into what we um, determined were, were eight principles that should be inherent in a new national care service. The first one is universal, universality of care and the promotion of social welfare. Um, and that should be on offer to people from, from the womb to the tomb, if you like, from the cradle to the grave. Uh, and it should be on offer um, locally and accessibly, that's the second point, based on prevention, that services should be available, and we suggested through local community hubs, um, that services should be built on relationships with the minimum intervention and minimum bureaucracy. Anyone will tell you in social work and social care that they are tied up in bureaucracy. And some of it absolutely meaningless, some of it just to cover backs for, um, for managers. The fourth point is that service provision should be based on individual and collective agreement on what need is and what, the, and what, uh, what are, we recognise as good outcomes for services that are provided. The fifth point is that people should live as independently as possible. Um, and that people with disabilities should be supported in such a way that they are abled through the interventions that they're subject to, rather than um, their, their disabilities being perpetuated. 
the the set the, the next point is one that's already been covered that all pub all services should be provided publicly <coughs> and free at the point of need. And we're extremely concerned by this government's um, kind of habit, if you like, of um, cutting, cutting down local government services and building up third sector services, which usually are cheaper to provide and easier to control through the funding mechanisms of central government. And we think uh, that that's wrong. And we believe the only place for the third sector in the provision of a national care service should be to provide quite unique and specialized services. Um, and I, I give you the example that we often use is, is Erskine Hospital. And there are other um, very specialized drug resources, for instance, which are better provided through the, through the third sector. But in general terms, service should be provided publicly. Um, the, the next one is that the workforce should be valued and Linda's covered some of that. And the final one, the eighth one, is that we, we should recognize diversity and difference and celebrate them through the way in which we provide services at a local level. So the bill, as far as we, we're concerned, does none of these things as it stands. Now, we've, we've had dialogue over the last couple of years while well, we've been talking about this with, uh, with civil servants, with people in the organizations and associations concerned with care and social work. And that, that uh, dialogue's generally been quite constructive and we've noticed that some of these bodies have started to take on some of the ideas that we've been arguing for and started to take us uh, far more seriously than, than we thought we might be when we set out on this task. However, what has been really, really difficult to get to is, uh, is to get past the discipline of the SNP parliamentary group. Um, we had a, a unison hosted uh, an event in Scottish Parliament just a few weeks ago. It seems like, like years ago now, given what's happened in the last few days. And, and we had uh, a number of Labour, Labour politicians turned up to. We had a good dialogue with them. We only had one SNP uh, MSP turn up and he made it clear to us that uh, that his colleagues would not support a pause for the bill. Now suddenly in the last few days that's all changed and and that um, there's been a fracture in that discipline that we need to seriously take advantage of and we need to um, test the metal of the candidates, however many there are, there's three so far for the leadership and the people that might support them. And there's an opportunity here for us. So we need to pause the bill. We need It needs to be rethought entirely. Now we don't claim to have all the answers. Um, we've been in constant dialogue with people and some of our ideas have been amended along the way, but we do believe that we have a much stronger foundation for the ideas that were put forward than Scottish government have and the people like the KPMG and so on who who framed the bill for them. Uh, and it, it, it's been um, a, a mess and we're constantly pointing that out to people. And it seems now that there's an opportunity to maybe try and get this whole thing back onto a firmer footing. So I'll leave it at that. And thanks very much for this opportunity.